the Islanders, the next two games will determine their playoff experience. They, I mean, it's going to come down to Pittsburgh tonight where Yaro Halak has just been called up. He's going to get the start in net, and that will give Grice the rest for tomorrow afternoon, uh, evening when they play the Bruins. Right now, there are ten games left. They are two points back from the Bruins. The Bruins have eight games left. They are two points up. It comes down to this weekend. They either take three of the next four points or they don't make the playoffs. I see the schedule and I see a trap. You have a couple of teams that are struggling right now in the division. You have the Blue Jackets, who we all know are much better than the record indicates right now. The Senators, who went to the conference final last year. And the Hurricanes and Wings, who are playing sneaky hockey, as I like to call it. Yeah, they lost to the Islanders last night, but they took a commanding 4-3 lead. And they really showed a lot of versatility. So the Rangers have to approach this cautiously. Can they take at least three out of five? Yeah. Do I see that? Remains to be seen. I mean, the additions of Will Butcher, the addition of Jesper Brat. Will Butcher set a Devils franchise record, three assists in his first rookie game. His kids are on fire, and it's really helping him right now. Is it sustainable? I'm not sure. We'll have to play it out and see. But their goaltending's revitalized with Roland Melanson. The kids are gelling well with the veterans. Everything's just going right for New Jersey. And I mean, the Rangers right now are sitting pretty in the top wildcard spot. Their focus is just staying where they are right now. They are in the best spot to be at, and to do that, all they have to do is play 500 hockey on this road trip. I mean, the Kings aren't really in the playoff picture, but the Ducks and the Sharks are fighting over the Pacific lead. Your bet that they're going to be the hardest opponent on this road trip, they're going to have to have their focus there in San Jose and Anaheim. Oh, let the fire sale begin, baby. <laughs> Rangers are ready to blow it up and start over, but you know what? Good on them. It was a great move for both sides. It's good for Gordon and Shera to kind of sit down and say, you know what, this is the best option for both clubs. Rangers get the second round pick they want. They have a really top-notch defensive prospect in uh, Igor or uh, Rykov. Sorry, um, but Michael Gramner really reinforces the the bottom six. Penalty kill. Um, he's going to be really fast in that line, probably with Zaka um, and Miles Wood. But it's a really good deal all around, and I think he stays with New Jersey after this year. Shock with the Knights? <laughs> my, my bracket's dead. The, the Knights <laughs> killed my bracket. I had the Kings advancing in six. I feel really silly now because I died on the hill of, you know, the Knights will die in the first round. Uh, it, it just, the ball keeps rolling. And, you know, Vegas, they know they're not the most talented team. Everyone knows they're not the most talented team, but nobody <laughs> works harder. Gerard Gallant has implemented uh, just a cultural shift. In the, the, the arena's electric. The fans have gone behind it almost immediately. And it's hard to not get swept up. It's contagious. I mean... I'm not mad that they got that far, and it's kind of uh, a stake in the heart of every other NHL fan. This team didn't exist last year, <laughs> and they're in the second round of the playoffs, and they haven't lost a game yet. They swept the first round and took a 7-0 lead in game one. It's I love every second of it. It's unbelievable. Matt, your Islanders, what are their plans towards the offseason? <sighs> it's been the same plan since October, Chris, and that is re-sign John Tavares. Now, they haven't done that so far, and there's a lot of speculation that they might not. Um, now, John Tavares, he still needs a new contract, but the Islanders are supposed to be in the playoffs right now. They're supposed to be competing in postseason hockey. They're not, so it's back to the drawing board. They have the league-worst defense. They have the league-worst goaltending. What happened? So this team is it's in complete overhaul. They're going to have over $10 million in cap. They have to go into free agency, be prepared to spend big money. I'm talking, I'm not saying they'll get him, but they need to go for Eric Carlson. They need to go for these big-name free agents and big-name defenders who can help plug these holes that they have in their lineup. Yaroslav Halak, you see right here, he's not going to be back. He's going to move on in free agency. Who are they going to have in net? They have two kids who are coming up, one from the Swedish League, one from the Russian League. They need to figure out defense, goaltending, and then we'll see from there. And John Tavares. John Tavares is priority number one. <laughs> Matt, who do you got winning the division? Oh, Tampa Bay, all the way. I mean, their start has been nothing short of phenomenal. I think Kucherov and Stamkos average more than two points a game so far. They're carrying that team. Their power play is in the top of the league. Their goaltender is already elite caliber after taking the starting reins in the second half of last season. I mean, it's their division to lose. If another team is going to creep up, it's going to be because Tampa Bay's inconsistency I want to jump in fails. Real quick with you. 
I think another team that's going to jump in is going to be Toronto, who's in second place. When you have Austin Matthews, a young guy who's putting up amazing uh, second points. Second week in a row, you're trying to just step on exactly. the floor Exactly, yes, here, no, okay? because I do agree that Toronto's going to run away with this division. I don't think Tampa's going to last. I think. But it's, how are they going to do that when you have Frederick Tampa, Anderson's inconsistency in net, dude? Their defense is young. They're giving up way too many shots on goal. No, and, I, I do agree, but they just have the offensive power in Toronto. Now, don't get me wrong. Tampa does have a strong offensive power with Kucherov and Stamkos. But I just like the Toronto's energy, and I love the energy that the fans bring it to the stadium. It is great. They're a young and I just team. Love everything that they they'll, do, they'll get there. I don't think this is their year yet, but yes, down the road, I'll agree with that.